Since the purpose of this lesson is first and foremost to show you how to use Ban in a Box to practice effectively with an existing file, I'm going to assume that you already know some of the very basics, such as how to type in chords if you need to create your own playback. And after all, there are dozens of videos on YouTube covering this. So for this tutorial, I am going to open up one of the lesson files available from my site. And this is from a West Montgomery lesson. You'll notice here in the uh, mixer view at the right that it initially loads with some default MIDI sounds. We see here uh, four different uh, channels or tracks. And this happens when the file hasn't originally been saved to include all the uh, different patches, some of which are not available for every version of Band in a Box. And these MIDI sounds can sound somewhat cheesy. <laughs> so before we begin, we want to replace them with some real tracks, which are actual samples of real musicians that will back you up. Uh, currently, this is what it sounds like. Not, not very uh, inspiring. <laughs> okay, so the only MIDI channel we want to keep here is the melody channel. Okay, and it is set to MIDI channel 4. And if you ever want to find out where it is, you can go up here to uh, Preferences, uh, Channels, and you will see that the melody channel is on 4. Okay. But it doesn't tell you that over here. So it usually shows up as an instrument other than piano, bass, or drums. And in this case, it is the uh, muted trumpet. And I recommend that you assign a MIDI piano to play this track. So the first thing we have to do is go up to Melody in the uh, top menu and select Melody here and select Edit Melody Track. Another window shows up, and then what we want to do is move to Soloist Track. Then click OK. Go to the Soloist Track in the mixer, and you will notice that it is blank. Click in the blank area and select MIDI Instrument Patch. And in the uh, side window that opens up, you want to go down and select number one here, Acoustic Piano. And you will see that it is set. And after this, you want to set its volume, which is right here above it, all the way to its max, which is plus 6.00. And this is because you want the soloist to be louder than the other instruments. Back to the real tracks. Personally, I like to use a piano jazz trio when I practice improvising lines. So we need to reassign the piano, bass, and drum tracks. And this is great if you need to hear the chords. However, once that is set up, in case you decide you want to practice chord melody without the piano getting in the way, all you have to do is mute the piano. Okay, let's begin with the bass, which is the first track up here. And in the mixture, we want to click on the instrument title and hover over to select real tracks. And this uh, side window opens up and we want to click on select real tracks. I like to use Neil Swanson or Ron Carter, but today let's use Ron Carter on bass. First, we need to scroll down until we find the bass acoustic category. After we find the bass acoustic category, then within that category, we have to look for Jazz Swing Ron AB. Here it is. Jazz Swing Ron AB SW140. And SW140 means that it is a swing style which was recorded at 140 beats per minute. Nonetheless, it will still sound good for practice purposes when played at 
120 beats or even less. So don't worry for now. Finally, to use this real track, we need to click on Generate Track, which is at the bottom here. We will see that the bass is now in the bass track at the top. We are now ready to pick our pianist. So again, we go to the uh, piano track here, click on it, and select real tracks. The side window opens and we click on select real tracks. And for piano, Kenny Barron is one of my favorites. For this, we need to scroll down until we find the uh, piano acoustic category. Once we're in the piano acoustic category, we need to look for Rhythm Jazz Swing Kenny SW140. And here we have it. So again, we go down here to the bottom and click on Generate Track. We can see here on the second track that the piano is now set. And it is time to pick our drummer. For this, we go to Drums here in the mixer. We click on this, and this time we, we click on Select Real Drums. Not real tracks, but real drums. A new window opens up. And I like to use Terry Clark, who used to play with Jim Hall, or Danny Gottlieb, who played with Pat Metheny. Let's use Danny today. For this, we need to scroll down to Jazz Swing Danny Sticks. And here we have it. This time we need to double click on the uh, name and then we press OK. Now we want to create some section markers and style variations. So if you're practicing, say, over a standard, you want to click on the first measure right at the left of it and create the A section of the form. And if you click on it, you see that it changes colors. Depending on the real track, each color represents a variation in the instrumental performance. Usually you'll have a letter A here, or 1A, or if not, the time signature, which is the case here. And usually a color with the letter A will be more laid back than one with the letter B and so on. And if you right click on it, it should tell you a little bit more about the uh, styles there and what is selected. And normally you would place a different variation again for the bridge and then again for a C section if available. Let's listen to how it all sounds. But in order to hear all the real tracks and changes we've made, it is important that you first click on the play button with the plus sign at the top left here. And this will refresh and regenerate the song and its tracks to include the new real tracks. Much better than what we heard at the beginning, which is the uh, MIDI sounds. So next we want to set our tempo and uh, if you're learning this for the first time, you might want to start out at a much slower tempo. So let's bring it down to around 95. When you're satisfied with it, I recommend saving everything so you won't have to go through all of this again. But there is one final check. You want to go to Options up here at the top menu towards the left. You want to select Preferences at the bottom. Click on that. And right here where it says Environment Options, you want to make sure that this top one, OK to save, load, reverb, volume, etc. with songs. That way it will save the uh, adjustment in volume you made to the uh, MIDI track that is now on the soloist uh, track. And then you just simply click OK. And you go here to File, 
and you want to go to save special and it's going to say save song with patches and harmony so you click on that and another window comes up and you just want to go save at the bottom it might show you another window here where you have the original file and you're going to hit save and we're ready to start practicing if you are practicing some phrases such as those included in this file you have two options you can play along with them or you can mute them the soloist track in this case and just play the lines by reading them from a separate printed source such as the included PDF and we can see what the uh, printed source would look like here on the uh, side of the uh, screen at the bottom I actually recommend you do both for starters that you play along with what you hear complete with the line playing and you also look at the uh, PDF uh, playing along with the actual line on the file will provide great feedback as to whether or not you are playing the phrase correctly. And it will also help you memorize it over time. And later you can consider muting it if you like. So to practice, let's pick something uh, in the middle of this file. Uh, here, for example, every two lines is a different uh, phrase. And the PDF uh, download that comes with this tells you what is on all of these measures. So you can uh, read and play along with it. But uh, I'm going to go down to 57B. And this uh, phrase by Wes Montgomery starts here, uh, plays for four measures in the key of C major. And then it is transposed to the key of F major. So let's hit play and see how it sounds. Okay, uh, two things. I might want it a little bit slower. And also the soloist track is kind of low in relationship to the uh, real tracks. So I want to go here to the top to my bass and bring that down almost down to minus four approximately. Whoops. I want to do the same thing with the piano volume and the same thing with the drums. Let's bring the tempo down a little bit more, maybe to 85. And notice that wherever I place my uh, cursor, when I hit the space bar, Band in a Box will play from that measure on. That's much better. So I want to loop measures 57 through 60. So all I have to do is press shift on my keyboard. And then I'm going to click on the starting measure and I want to click here over the chord that begins the first half of that measure. Never do that on the actual measure number. And you'll see that it is selected. Now what we want to do is take our cursor all the way to the end of the uh, region we want to select and while holding uh, shift down also and click on that. So here we have our four measures selected. Now to start playing, all we have to do is press F10 on our keyboard. And it will loop that indefinitely until you stop it. The space bar on your keyboard in Band in a Box will serve to get it to play again and to stop. 
If you want to deselect what you've selected here, all you have to do is click on any other uh, measure, for example, here, and it's been deselected. Now, wherever you place your cursor, for example, here, we see this D minor and uh, measure 65. When we press the space bar again, it will start playing from there. Unfortunately, there is no previous countdown when you do this. So what I recommend you do is place your cursor two measures before the one that you're targeting or the one that you want to start practicing with. And that way, when it plays, you will feel the tempo for a couple of measures and have time to get situated on your instrument. Okay, one final... Uh, procedure that will come in handy during your practice session is when we learn new vocabulary, we usually want to get it down in different keys and using different fingerings. Uh, this one has each phrase already uh, built in in, in in two different keys, but let's say we want to practice them in two other different keys that are not the ones we have here. All we have to do is go up right here and this is the key of the song and let's say everything starts in C here we want to move everything to start in A so all we have to do is go up here transpose and set key signature and now every phrase will start in A so if I go back to uh, 57 which is what we were looking at. Now it sounds like this. <laughs> 